I can tell you, uh, those of you that are looking at the people on the call, we've got a, a restaurant and food and beverage operators from all scale, from Tropicana, which has got to be one of our largest, to uh, many of our favorite uh, local haunts. So uh, your role in our community is invaluable to us. So we're looking forward to being as helpful as we can. I want to offer just a couple initial comments. Uh, first of all, in Indiana, your reopening day is Monday or as soon as you want to thereafter. Uh, many of you indicated on our last call that lead time to order inventory was critical. I know it hasn't been a lot of lead time, but hopefully you've been able to stand up what you need as far as inventory and employees to, to get your businesses back on track. If you are still looking for sources of personal protective equipment, we've got uh, a good list on our website. It's also on the Reopen Evansville website. And just today, the state of Indiana also opened up another source for you. It's at Back on Track, Indiana Gov. And it's for businesses with 500 or fewer employees. So I think it's safe to say most everyone on the call could use that source if you need it as well. So. I hope that you're finding that uh, access to personal protective equipment is, is getting easier than it was a couple weeks ago. The other thing I just wanna mention uh, while I've got your early attention is that uh, one of the, um, recommend, I won't say recommendations, one of the requirements that the state of Indiana put on all businesses is to have a reopening plan. Uh, that is simply a document that you, you can produce and share with your employees that, that tells them how you're preparing for their safety, how you're preparing your environment for them and their customers to be in that space. And uh, uh, it doesn't have to be a very elaborate document, but we've put some guidance on that on our website as well. And uh, there's some examples there you can use. So if you uh, can give that some attention before Monday, that would be keep you in good stead with our, with our state leadership. Um, other things that we're guessing are gonna be challenges for you. Uh, are on this agenda I have in front of me. I edited it from the last time we talked because I think some of the things that uh, we raised have been addressed, but uh, I don't ever intend to tell you what is, should be on your agenda. Our interest is to hear from you. So I do have with us today, uh, Lynn Herr and Lynn and Chris from the Vandenberg County Health Department. And I know that they're uh, ready and, and able to give you the best advice they can. So without further ado, does anyone want to open up and tell us how things are going to get uh, ready to open next week? Because if you don't, I'll start to ask you. I, I know, I know, John, I know you're on this call, John Cesar, and I know that the casinos are down the, down the path, but all of us are interested in knowing how things are going in, in the way that Tropicana is looking at this. Would you uh, un unmute and offer a comment? Um, sure. Well, and you can speak on behalf of the CBB too, if you want to. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'll just do Tropicana for right okay. now. Um, no, from a standpoint of Tropicana, we don't. We're not looking to open up any of our amenities until after we open the casino. So, um, right now, um, it looks like we're not going to be open until um, mid June at the earliest, uh, depending on how you look at things. Uh, um, uh, some of the governor's statements and whether we fall into phase four or phase five or if they're gonna create a special phase for us. Um, so it's, um, it, we're preparing. Uh, we have a minimal amount of staff. We only have 22 employees on staff right now. Mm -hmm. um, we furloughed over 650. Nice. Um, and uh, we get probably 50 to 60 calls a day, um, especially since the governor's back on, um, uh, back on track, uh, came out with the different phases. Um, some team members think we're going to open the restaurants next uh, Monday, which is mm -hmm. not going to happen. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting. There'll be other casinos around the, the country um, opening up ahead of ahead of us. Uh, a casino opened up in Idaho this past weekend, and it was wow. it was packed to the gills. Um, just uh, just shows you how people are pent up um, and sick of being around their relatives and want to get out. <laughs> um, but uh, no, we're. Uh, you know, we're, we're playing this, um, obviously our, our business is a little bit more um, high touch than most businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, not only circulating cash and chips, but also touching machines and a lot of high touch surfaces. So obviously cleaning is gonna be an important part of our uh, opening plan as well. 
but uh, yeah, not a minute goes by here I'm trying to figure out how to get the reopening guidelines. I do have a question for you though on capacity. So 50% capacity. Um, has anybody defined whether that's uh, seating capacity or fire capacity? Um, I'm, I'm going to let the health department speak to that. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I don't have an Chris absolute Lewinke answer. With the Van Brick County Health Department. Uh, basically, the executive order is talking about 50% seating capacity. So um, that, that's really what they're looking for on that. So you'd be limited to that, John. Just what your seating capacity would be there, 50% of that. So yeah. I, should order, I should order twice as many chairs, right? <laughs> well, if the fire marshal, you got to follow him. <laughs> I got you. Obviously, there's a big difference between seating capacity and fire capacity. And then also, it says bars are not allowed to open yet. Um, Correct. But if you have yeah, bars, well, it's, it's a, part of your restaurant. You know, uh, from the Alcohol and Tobacco Commission, actually, just right before I came up here for this uh, meeting, and on their website, uh, they've actually clarified. They were saying if uh, uh, they were trying to say, okay, what is a bar? Because it's really difficult to say. But if it's 21 and over, you don't let anybody under, they're kind of saying, okay, you're a bar. However, if you are serving food, and if you look around in our community, I swear, I think 99% of them, they have already a variety of menu type items that they're offering. So they are looked at as a restaurant slash bar, and they can open, uh, they can be at 50% seating capacity, they have to follow all the requirements. Now the bar cannot be open, so uh, obviously I might want to order a drink with my meal. So a server is going to take my order. They're going to go get that prepared. Then they're going to bring it to the seat, so it can be open in that capacity. But I just can't belly up to the bar and say, "Hey, I'm going to have this or that." So no, that that won't happen. So that's kind of changed. But but they can be open and uh, just going to have the service uh, brought to them. So that came straight from the Alcohol and Tobacco Commission to uh, actually define that. So. Because there was a lot of, uh, oh, un it wasn't very clear, obviously, when that order first came out. But at least they defined it now, so that's helping a lot of people. Great, thank you. And John, uh, can you also just, I'm interested, will all the casinos in Indiana open at the same time? Do you have any guidance uh, on that? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. We've, uh, we've asked, we haven't asked that, we haven't asked that. It's been brought up in conversations, um, in, oh, private, in private conversations. But, um, it also goes back to even if all the casinos are given the uh, think about this now if everybody's given the approval to open on a certain date let's just use June 14th as a miracle date um, it doesn't necessarily mean that some of the casinos in smaller markets will st will, will reopen mm -hmm. because they might not have enough demand for uh, to be profitable to open so they may de delay a, a bit until further restrictions are lifted I mean um, we're anticipating only being allowed to open up half of half of our capacity, um, even when we're granted that, uh, unless, well, let's say, say August 1st, which will kill everybody around here, but um, but if, assuming June 14th, we're gonna assume it's gonna be approximately half our capacity. Um, some casinos may not be profitable at that point in time with a lack of demand in their areas. Um, um, it is our every intention to open up on uh, the earliest we possibly can by law. Yeah, well, thanks for the update, John. It's, it's a big part of our community and we're all thinking about you. And I, and I know the city of Evansville and all the others that depend on, on how successful you are are thinking about you, too. Appreciate that. Uh, we're getting some questions in the chat. One is about um, um, what we need in our restrooms. I don't know if our health department folks can see this, but the question is, uh, do they have to use paper towels or can uh, the air dryers still do the job? So the air dryers can still do the job. That, that's not a problem. Just making sure, you know, you can always have sa hand sanitizer plus soap and water, but warm water and soap, you know, uh, will do the job. Mm -hmm. May I ask the folks on the call how they're doing with the mask requirement? Are they finding that they can manage the logistics with their cooking staff, their serving staff, their front of the house staff? Um, and are you, do you feel like you're adequately pre prepared to start using masks in your operations? Has anyone worked through that yet? I know your doors aren't open, so you don't exactly know yet, but many of you are doing curbside right now. Hickory Pit Stop has switched to the reusable mask. Mm -hmm. Just finding that more efficient for your staff? Most definitely, because most of them will go through 
three or four a day if uh, they weren't careful. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. And do you have what you need in that space? Hickory Pit? I do have what I need to get started. Um, we ordered backups for everyone as well in case of accidents or what have you. But I find that every week or two weeks I can put in a new order. So in the masking space, um, would our health department friends like to say anything about that? I'm gonna lead in by saying, I think one of the, one of the opportunities that we are gonna have as industry leaders is to demonstrate leadership in this space because I expect the getting used to the fact that a mask is a uh, indication of respect or courtesy or and safety for others is, is a notion that's gonna be a little foreign. And I'm, I'm guessing that all of, all of you will have to um, help your employees and others get used to the notion that masks are gonna be a bigger part of our interaction environment for a while to come. Has anybody started to uh, run into that with their teams? And health folks, health department, do you have any clear advice you want us all to have on that topic? Well, actually, I think you guys kind of requested that we do some short videos that will be available, and hopefully those will be available tomorrow afternoon. Those scripts were written today, okay, and then we've got her. some folks, yeah, we've got some folks coming in from home that are, have been working from home that are actually going to complete those for us tomorrow afternoon. That was but a great really meeting. We sure Excuse appreciate me? that. Oh, okay. And then, um, well, it helps when family works at the chamber, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, really, it's teaching people that it's not about them. That it is about if if you're wearing a mask, you are protecting your cough. If they're, they have a mask, they're protecting their cough and their transmission. And when you both have on masks, that's mutual respect. And that means that the potential of either one of you getting sick is much higher. So in the cloth mask and the procedural mask, basically do, uh, the procedural mask may stop a little bit more, but really they're for the same purpose. Uh, are those paper masks and the cloth masks. Um, so whatever works for them, but it's just getting everyone, um, everyone in the community aware that that mask is, is a sign of respect. So I know that earlier in some of our calls, we had some questions about um, uh, the business owner's authority to refuse uh, entry to folks that aren't wearing a mask. And um, the conversation this morning on our call with retailers was that uh, basically you, you can choose to do that if you elect to. We're hoping that with good signage and other um, uh, marketing and communication, we can create the environment that makes that uh, as comfortable as possible for everyone. But if you, if you feel like someone is at risk uh, to your employees or your space, you can uh, um, basically refuse their entry if you wish to. Uh, I think that that question came up in the chat. So I want you to know I'm watching the chat. I'd like to share a, a few things that we'll be rolling out tomorrow. Um, and Chanda, can you advance the slides? Whoever's got the slides. Starting tomorrow, we're going to have a bit of a media kit available for your use. And um, it will be on our website and the city's website. And it's set up for... Uh, all of our regions. So it's set up to be useful in both um, Southwest Indiana and Northern Kentucky. And it's intended for you to have tools that let you be clear with your customers that you've done all you can to make sure that they will have a good experience coming back through your doors. So this will be available. You can print these things yourselves. If you want a door cling, we're having clings printed that you can use to um, get this message out. But we hope you'll find this a useful tool. There's a couple other parts to it. Can you flip the next slides here? Uh, I go back. Back a couple more. Oh, I guess we don't have all of the whole package here. Sorry. Tomorrow, when you look here, you will see that there's also um, a slide that shows the kind of billboards that we'll have up around town. Uh, when we first talked, you said one of the things we could do for you is to make sure that there's uh, neutral third-party communication about the fact that it's okay to re-engage in commerce. So we've worked with Lamar to put up some digital billboards that will have basically this message on them. 
And then we've also produced some other uh, content that you'll find in this package online tomorrow that are uh, signs you can use to uh, encourage people to use masks, signs you can use that uh, remind people about social distancing and some other tools. So uh, we're trying to make sure we give you some tools you can use. We hope you find these helpful and we really hope that we see them all over our region. So we're um, very hopeful that you'll take this, print them out and make sure they're uh, displayed proudly on your doors. And for those that are in, um, have customers that are Spanish speaking, uh, expect, especially if they're primarily Spanish speaking, we do have the claims in this content available in Spanish as well. So uh, look for that tomorrow. Who else has questions or comments or concerns as you're getting ready to reopen? There's 50 someone in the call, so I'm happy to start calling on you. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this as a, as a uh, kudos to those of you who are using social media well. Uh, everyone that's put social media on Facebook, I've been in and spent money with you already. So I was just at Entwined. I now have wine in my backpack. Um, I've been into Just Rennie's. I'm making the rounds of those of you that are using social media to remind me of what you're doing. So that's my testimonial to say, please use social media. Um, I can't tell the story anywhere close to the way you could communicate with your customers and give them uh, the latest on what you're doing to make them feel welcome, telling them how you're preparing your space, uh, putting out whatever specials and interesting um, um, opportunities you have for them. I think it's just critical that you uh, jump into this. And if you don't feel like you're able in this space, let us know. We'll connect you up with some simple tools uh, to, to allow you to use social media to get the word out on your, on your opening plans. Not everyone may open Monday. So whenever you're opening, we want to make sure that your hours are current. Um, I'll say this as well. We're happy to have you send that to the chamber. We will continue to keep our restaurant information current as you give it to us. But I think right now your best tools are going to be uh, your own social media relationships with your customers. I'm um, getting a question about table spacing requirements. In the back on track guidance uh, from the state of Indiana, it's basically a reference to the CDC requirements for restaurants that have been developed by the uh, Restaurant Association, and they do require spacing for your tables. Um, the health department folks will add more depth to this if I get it wrong, but it's basically six feet between tables, uh, a maximum of 10 individuals at a table, presuming that's a family group or a group that's, you know, been in social contact previously. Uh, so table spacing is going to be one of the ways that your um, occupancy is, is impacted. If you have challenges with where, what do I do with the tables and chairs, um, we've got some businesses that are willing to help you with that. They're, they're being offering some very reasonable ways to get those tables and chairs stored for you temporarily if you need something like that. So those are the kinds of things that we're, we're going to Keep standing up as we think we can be useful to you. Uh, did that answer, Joe? Did that answer your question on table spacing? Joe Raber, I think, put the question out there. Um, now I'm going to go on to Michelle's question. I don't know if the health department folks can see this question, so I'm going to repeat it for all concerned. Um, if an employee tells you that they are quarantined or their family member tested positive, how do employers know about this? I know the HIPAA is going to keep them from being notified. So no. that I'm guessing is the role for the survey, but would you speak to that a little bit, Lynn or Chris? Sure. So uh, if, a, if, if an, a, one of your employees tests positive, you will be notified. If a contact, a close contact is exposed, they will receive a phone call from um, the Vandenberg County Health Department. We encourage them and strongly encourage them to let their employer know because they are going to need to stay home for 14 days um, or until they become positive and then they would start their quarantine process. Um, if they're and if they call into you, you could always request a letter 
saying that they have become a close contact. But we do encourage them. We're on the phone and we do follow up with them on a regular basis. Um, and this really has not been a problem for those industries that ha are open now. People have been very open and honest about that. I'm seeing a great note from Julie suggesting that you all update your Google business page if you haven't uh, with your new hours. Uh, Google is a really great tool right now because it's also a place you can go to see who's busy when. So if you're needing to get supplies or inventory, you can use the Google um, congestion feature to, to see when you can slip into you know, your, your suppliers and pick up things as well. So another good social media tip. Thank you, Julie. After you get open, three weeks have passed, your, your, your demand is not where you hoped it would be. Um, if, if you find that you need to rethink some of your operations, we, we don't want that for you. But if it happens, I want to be um, uh, front and center in making sure that we can offer you some confidential tools to help you look at your business plan, uh, look at adjustments you might want to make. The Small Business Development Center and their counselors will be uh, available, and it's a tool I encourage you to keep in mind if you need to rethink any aspect of your business plan, or if you have an idea for adjusting it or, or expanding something. Uh, I think that may be a tool that's uh, important in the weeks to come. I've got questions about outdoor dining. Um, I'm going to give my general understanding of answers uh, because I know that the city of Evansville is working, and I think the other cities as well, so um, Newburgh and others, are looking at how they can be as flexible as is possible with outdoor dining regulations. It does require review because there are safety issues, and it's a little different city to city, but I think that the opportunities for outdoor dining certainly are an important part of this mix. So we have had some good questions about that. Um, Lynn, is there any specific guidance the health department would have on this? Okay. And I'm going to let Chris answer this one since it's his wheelhouse. Sure. His deal, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so we already allow outdoor dining, so you can do that. Uh, we still have to follow the requirements as far as the six feet social distancing. And you did really good about introing that, just making sure if that's something you haven't done to check, probably here in Vandenberg County, check with uh, uh, oh, Building Commission and um, right. Area Planning Commission. They would, they would be the ones, Area Planning Commission would have to oversee that if they can approve all that and fire department everybody then you can start that process only thing that we would ask in that process again so six feet social distancing you still have to clean and sanitize in between each seating uh and then uh the added part of um drawing a blank here there was something else i was going to go with that but yeah no more than 50 percent capacity total capacity indoor outdoor so if you can keep to that then that would be fine and I do think uh, most of our cities are trying to expedite this. So if you see an opportunity that helps you with flexibility, I'd encourage you to start having those conversations right away. Sure. And the other comment, I guess, about the outdoor dining is, so it's just dining. Basically, you're bringing the food and the drink out to them. So we don't want to have any drink stations out there with ice or, you know, food or anything like that. It's basically everything coming from inside, just brought outside. So nothing stored outside. So that would be the other requirement. But other than that, uh, you'd be free to do it. Got a question about menus and um, cleaning them. I believe the guidance is to use disposable menus. Um, I'm, the health department will correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, and I know a lot of our businesses are using digital menus. They're putting them on their phones and many are using butcher paper to post them on walls and trying to do some creative things in the menu space. Uh, but I think right. that that is, you know, cleaning, cleaning plastic menus is gonna be a challenge. Am I, am I on target there, health department friends? You are. Uh, I know I have talked to a number of operators already the last few weeks, and some of them, a number of them actually are going to continue to use the laminated uh, menus, but what they're doing is they have a, a set process, and again, it's all about processing and communication, but uh, what they're doing is they're offering that uh, to the customer, and then after that seating, you know, they're also taking that, they're cleaning and sanitizing that after yeah. each use. Uh, so for those that have elected to go with the laminate, then that's what they're doing. The others are doing, as you mentioned, trying to go digital uh, or have something already posted. And then you can have pre-printed, um, uh, you know, menus. And then the suggestion there is to go ahead and discard it after each use. Yeah. Randy Hobson, how are things going with you? 
The people I can see, I'm going to call on. <laughs> I'm good. I, I'm sorry. I joined a little late. Is it okay to do verbal questions? Because yeah. I type like crap. Yep. Go, go for it. And I, I apologize. I hope this wasn't already answered. Can, can somebody clarify? I want to understand the bar seating question. Um, my understanding is if you have uh, an area in your restaurant that is a bar, it has seating, um, that is typical table seating, that is allowed, but no seating at the actual bar. Is that correct or incorrect? Yes, that's correct. And we got that confirmed also again with the Alcohol and Tobacco Commission. So if you have a bar and you want to be seating in that area, but just not at the bar itself, so those chairs would have to be removed or stools if you can. If you can't, then just kind of stanchion them off or rope them off uh, so no one's, uh, you know, uh, have the ability to sit there or congregate there. And then uh, then you can utilize the seating again with six feet uh, distancing. Yeah, so that would be correct. Thank you, Chris. Um, sure. The other part of that question, um, I want to make sure I'm interpreting 50% capacity in, in the proper way. Um, is it based on... Um, tables or is it based on the number of people in the restaurant for example as long as you're maintaining the six foot if um you take out half your tables just for argument here uh that's one strategy uh all those tables may not be full so you're not actually at 50 percent. you may be at 48 or whatever if you have a four top with two people sitting there so my question is if you're distancing properly can you have can you add people to get you to 50% capacity uh, as long again as those tables are, are spaced properly? Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. right. And that's my understanding as well. So even with our inspectors, we've been talking and even with the fire department, you know, the fire department, they have you guys have already a, a seating capacity. So that's how many, you know, you can have, obviously. So if we eyeball it and it looks like, oh my gosh, this looks way more, you know, if we take 50%, it still looks like way more obviously there's an issue, but uh, to go to your direct question, I think if you take those seatings out, that you can still have that 50% capacity in there, then that can work. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Last question. This relates to uh, unemployment and how to manage that with employees. Are we talking about that at all, Tara? And, we and can. Uh, I'll, we'll answer the questions as best we can, and we'll get you answers if we don't have them. So okay. I guess the main question is, as we bring employees back, and we've ran into one situation where one of our employees is really unable to come back to work because her husband has been quarantined. He's an ICU nurse and she is needed to provide childcare. Okay. So the second part of that question is if we cannot bring her back because of that, uh, when we get into our PPP loan and we start looking at full-time employee headcount, is there an exemption made for that individual because she is quarantined or does that play against us? And I know that's a little heavy, but. I'm 90% sure I have this right, but because she's got access to that extended sick leave, I think she'll count as being on your payroll, uh, even if she's not at work. Uh, okay. But I will make sure that we get back to you with a more specific confirmation of my, um, my, my legal advice that's good for what you're paying for. It. But <laughs> I have heard that question before, and I think that's in the accurate space. Anyone on the call that knows more about that than me? Because I don't know that much. <laughs> well, your price is right, Tara. I will say that. I was going to say, but... <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's several questions about using disposable plates and silverware. It's my understanding that that's not required as you open. Uh, it was for carry out, but um, health department, would you speak to that? Sure, yes, uh, so you're correct. You can use disposable, or if you want to, you can still use your china, you can use your silverware, you can use your glass, cups, things and that. Uh, the nice thing I always tell people uh, for the past six weeks or so, I've been saying in the food industry, we're wired for this, we're already cleaning and sanitizing. We already have those processes in place and they're very effective uh, for this coronavirus as well. So the key thing is, for example, if it was going to be silverware or something, we don't want to have it already preset at the table. So I know I've been talking to a number of operators already over the weeks and so they're going to have it 
uh, you know, in the back of the house, someone's washing their hands or putting on gloves, they're rolling it in silverware or they're putting it in a little special baggie so it's covered and then they're bringing that out to the customer so it's all protected. So yeah, that's another option. So you can, yeah, you don't have to stay with uh, disposable. Uh, maybe on some cases it might be good to do that. Other cases, you know, again, it's, you know how it is when you go out with your family, you really want to enjoy, it's all about the ambiance and the food and everything that you get there. So on a uh, silverware and uh, China plate, it's uh, much better. But yes, we can go ahead and wash and sanitize those properly and it'll be fine. Great, does, does that answer your questions? Those of you that had, I'll put those in the chat. If anyone's yeah, got more definitely. on that. Okay, just want to make sure we're, we're getting you the information you need. Uh, so the MG folks posted a question about their entrances and I'm, I'm just gonna call on them because I think that's probably of interest to a lot of folks. I happen to know your space and you do have two doors. So you could use one for in and one for out. Um, I don't know if that's health department guidance, but getting people in and out of entrances and managing social distance does seem like one of the important points to get right. I've seen a lot of best practices about um, having one member of a party come in and, and hit the reservation stand while the others wait outside. Um, some thoughts about having a staff member man the door so that uh, lots of people aren't opening and closing the door. I'm sure there's some uh, good ideas for managing the, the entryway. Um, anyone want to share those or um, would the MG folks like to repeat their question more specifically? I'm giving you the floor, sir. So um, basically I was just wondering to stop people from, you know, passing through the door. If we had one like entrance and one exit, that way the flow is going. Probably a good idea. Into each other. Yeah. Have others of you uh, sorted out your entryway successfully? Any guidance from my health department friends on that? Yes, uh, again, uh, speaking with some of the operators about that. So they were even gonna have a designated staff member. It's almost like a green light, red light. They can yeah. even have like walkie talkies. Some of them they were talking about the bigger operations and they were gonna say, okay, I've got a party of you know, a couple of different groups getting ready to leave here. And so they would just kind of ask the others to wait and then let one traffic go and go to the other. You know, they're just trying to be really creative, trying to figure out how can we do this best. So I uh, had that. And then Tara, even all the stuff that you had mentioned already about, you know, people staying in the cars, maybe I'll have one representative as they're getting ready to come in, reserve, all those type of things. They're, those are going to be really helpful ways to do it too. But I think if you can try to, again, it's communication. So, uh, if you have a staff member that can kind of assist with that, uh, kind of have a stop and go, uh, that, that may help too. That's what I've heard a few of them already tell me that they're working on. So I don't know if that's helpful. I hope it is. Yeah, thank you. Um, I see a question. Sarah? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the other thing is, as we uh, teach folks about social distancing and the importance of wearing a mask and those kind of things, you know, it, 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 when they're walking to their table or they're coming in from the outside and they are masked, you're just going to be passing people very quickly and that's the purpose for the mask is so that when you are having that six feet distance you know you're not exposed and then you go sit down at your table and you can take your mask off while you're there with your, your immediate family or your close circle so we are allowed to take them off to eat just worth, yeah, worth they noting we're gonna have to take them off to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we've got but another we know that that contact, you know, really for, for to get, be considered a con, a true contact, it takes, it takes a couple minutes, you know, and it is within a certain, you know, within six feet, you know, for five to 10 minutes and, and passing in and out while that's very important. We want people to do that. We don't want people, you know, this is a short period of time. So if you only have one door, you, you're really not putting people at that much of a risk. Okay, good, good to understand. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Lynn. Uh, I, I see that Sauce is on the call. I know you've got a um, Sauce that we all know and you've got a new operation as well. Everything uh, coming along for you? Sure, yeah, we are, uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, we are, uh, we're holding tight here. Uh, we, we haven't been doing any carry out or anything like that. We decided not to do that for our staff and health purposes, um, but, um, 
considering uh, uh, we could open on the 11th, I think we're going to wait a while. Um, not too sure what um, what everybody else is really doing, but um, uh, for for our purposes, um, we are more of a destination driven neighborhood as well with the bars as well, and so. Um, waiting for all that to kind of catch up and and maybe stagger our openings for all of our businesses down here um, within you know one soft will open up one week shimmix kitchen will open up another week um, and then hopefully Moe's will open up the week after that something like that I can't speak for Moe's but um, uh, that's kind of what we're planning on and I don't think uh, we're really going to do much activity down here until about uh, this maybe the third week in May well, you're in my neighborhood, so that's always important to me, personally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle has another question about employees. And the question is, it's in the chat, but for those of you that can't see it, uh, how about employees that are not comfortable coming back to work because they'll be in contact with the public? That's, a, that's a, gonna be one that every employer and employer are gonna have to handle. And um, the advice that we've been getting from HR professionals is that, one of the reasons to do all you can to give them confidence is to help them make the best decision they can. But ultimately, if the employee doesn't want to come back to work, it comes down to uh, a personal decision that you, that you get to manage. Um, to the extent that you can let that employee take more time, then, then that's an option. If you have employees that are critical and, and it's a business decision for you, you can um, in, essentially is, insist they come back and um, that will that will can activate stopping their unemployment. So it's it's a significant decision. So I'd make it carefully. But I think the best thing I can tell anyone on this call or any of the businesses we've been dealing with is that's why it's so important to do all we can to give them confidence that what we're doing is not only important that you're doing it, but that all of the businesses in your sector are doing the same thing and that it is the industry standard. So. Uh, how's that for not answering your question exactly, Michelle? Would you like to dig into that more specifically? I don't know who Michelle is, but I know she's on the call. There's Michelle. Hi. I put you on the spot. Sorry. No, 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 you're fine. Thanks for answering our questions. Um, we're with Wings, et cetera. Oh, okay. Right. So we were trying to manage all four locations and see, you know, what's the best protocol for our employees, you know, saying Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Being a restaurant, everyone on here knows that staffing isn't the easiest thing anyway. So then when you get those employees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, I think you answered it pretty good. Well, I think that, um, you know, that's going to be one of the, you know, we've got a huge number of people that are furloughed or laid off. We are hopeful and I think reasonably confident that most of those will come back because your businesses need them and you were operating successfully before this all happened. But there's going to be some fallout. Um, separate efforts that we have underway are thinking about how we make sure that where there are gaps and you need help with staffing or the individuals that aren't coming back into the workplace need help getting retrained. We're thinking about that as well. So just to... Um, to give you some context on how this whole um, this whole interruption is going to go with with our workforce, I think it's going to be complex. Um, Tara, yeah, this is Sharon Lamont with Entwined. Yeah, how Sharon? Um, hi. If a if a staff member does test positive, are besides the obvious max masks and sanitizers, is there any procedures for the rest of the staff? Since they've um, kind of I know there are because that's when tracing comes into effect. So back to the health department. Yeah. So we do an interview and actually uh, identify hundreds of key points with that interview. And with that comes uh, a discussion with their employer. So mm -hmm. then when that happens, a nurse is going to be talking to you to decide what other employees have been within six feet of this person and the time frame in which they are in contact with these people. Um, so, and then it would be maybe any customers in which, you know, they weren't. Now, if everybody is masks, masked again, that does lower that threshold. Uh, 
but then we're going to look at that individually on each individual and we will work with each employer to help them identify those at risk. Okay, thank you. And that would, and that would need quarantine as well. Yes. And then the food perspective part, then they would have to go to what we call a disinfectant. So you just like if we had a hepatitis A or norovirus, so all non-food contact surfaces, uh, high touch areas, those would have to go through a disinfectant process, a one-time thing to, if there is the virus there, then it would destroy that, uh, you know, get good ventilation and everything, and then, then they could resume. And again, we would love it if all of the employers also would have a process for screening individuals on arrival to work, yes. so that when they're screened on arrival to work, and they would be running a fever, they have a new cough, they have you know, some of those symptoms that have been identified by the CDC that they wouldn't even enter the building and you stop it right then. Right, and that is one of the things that we'd encourage you to have in your reopening plan. Uh, just a thought about how you might handle employees at the beginning of every shift. In addition to making them wash their hands, of course. <laughs> And Tara, again, in the food industry, we're built for this because we already have for our staff an employee illness policy. It's expanded, obviously, with the COVID-19, but we already have those things. So by questioning daily, hey, have you had a fever? Have mm -hmm. you had a shortness of breath, a cough, any of these? They answer yes to those things. Then you, know, you have to dig in deeper and then maybe go ahead and see your physician, uh, get tested possibly. So yeah, so those are things that we should be doing every day. And, and I think getting back to that question about, I'm not, as an employee, maybe I'm not comfortable to come back yet or something. But if we're doing those things and communicating that with our staff, exactly how we're, you know, with our employee illness policy or cleaning, sanitizing, or social distancing, or mask, if we're being very diligent about those things, that will add comfort to the staff as far as knowledge of, you know, what's going on and uh, the customers that are coming. They're going to be uh, more apt to come because they're seeing those things are done. And hopefully the employees will be entering through an entrance that isn't uh, for the general public, you know, so you can stop it right back there. Um, and then if our employees are wearing masks and if they're, uh, if you can screen temps and you have a thermometer, that is, that would be ideal. And I know you can get the, you can buy those thermometers. It's just a forehead thermometer. They're on Amazon, they're around and easy to get. And they don't actually touch people, so it's, it's pretty easy to have one for your operation if you don't. Uh, I'm gonna segue with a quick question. I, I, I see that, um, oh, uh, River City just asked a question about the thermometers. Um, yeah, so maybe Heather's correcting me that you can't get them quickly. I, I looked last week and it looked okay, but are you having trouble, Heather? With the thermometer? Looks like she is. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the soonest we can get one in is like late next week, which I mean, mm -hmm. is better than nothing, but I haven't been able to locate one that could be here sooner. And Anyone don't. got a better source? No, I don't, because everybody's, everybody's looking for them right now and everybody wants them shipped. But at the same time, you know, this is, we're in for the long haul, guys. You know, this is going to be months. And so if you can't get it just this week, you know, maybe you ask individuals to take their temperature before they come in and you're on a good, um, you know, a, a honor system. You know, there, there's other ways to do this um, in, in a way that we're still being responsible. Yeah, that's what we had asked our employees to do. We only have like three coming back, so um, they're just going to kind of monitor that before they come in. So. I want to put in a brief commercial for those of you that still may be thinking about resources. The Personal Protection Program, the CARES Act, that got so much attention because giant uh, businesses captured the first half of it, um, was refunded. If you haven't applied for that, there is still money there. Everyone's operating under the assumption that the PPE is gone, that our banks are too busy to help you with that now. But all of our local banks that I've talked to tell me they've cleared out the backlog and they have time and there is still, you know, billions of dollars there. So I would encourage you, if you haven't applied for the PPP and you, you might want to still pursue that. Our banks tell us that they're doing uh, loans that are, you know, 
a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars that doesn't have to be a giant amount to be useful to your business so i want to make sure that you knew that um your financial partner is still someone you should talk to if you haven't taken advantage of that opportunity it does cover your your payroll uh rent and that sort of thing so it could be pretty useful if you haven't um, explored that option and there are also some some local um loans and forgivable loans and grants available in our region they're kind of spread out you know there's some in one county and not in another in the city of evansville and poseyville and around so we've got those on our website uh, i just want you to know that whenever we find tools like that we'll do all we can to let you know that they're out there for you um, so if, if you find that those are still the, the biggest issue you've got we want to make sure that we hear from you about that who else haven't I picked on that's uh, about to open their business next week and uh, has a story to share? Gayla, how's the cake business doing? She may not pick up on me, but I see she's on the call. <laughs> Mr. Rennie, any sh anything to share on the catering ends of your business? Doug or whoever's on the call from Rennie's. Can you hear me? Yeah, of course. We just got a brand new speaker. Well, it's very impressive, Doug. So now I'm gonna use this for the very first time. <laughs> so there are two. Um, since we were essential anyway, the first week we tried to stay open, it wasn't practical for us. So we just told everybody to take unemployment and then stay home safe because they had a lot of kids, families. So we were shut down for five weeks. And then we got this payroll protection loan program, which requires everyone to open back up right away and get everybody off unemployment. So we opened last week, not to the public, but we took a couple of days of sanitizing. Uh, we had a full day of meetings and then we experimented with new recipes. And then Monday, we just opened up for the first time with all of our new protection so we had sign crafter um, did a custom made protection shield for us in front of our display case in front of the cookies and our cash register on the wall uh, we have hand sanitizer for all customers and we're only allowing three people at a time one at the register two at the display with six feet apart and we set up on the under the awning that people can line up out of the sun if it's raining outside um, and then we're allowing people, as one comes out, one can come in. And so far, and all of our employees are wearing masks. Um, I have some coming in, but it's gonna be a couple weeks away on disposables. And we all have homemade masks that everybody's wearing and we're doing our, all of our sanitizing. So far, it's been great response. We're doing better business than what we expected. And um, we had one customer today said, I'm impressed. You guys have shields in place. Your staff has all their, you know, hair control, their mask on. You have hand sanitizer. You guys are doing it the correct way. So now we feel a comfort level um, for all of our guests to come in and feel like, hey, we're in a safe environment and we want to come to Rennie's. And so far, believe it or not, we were shocked. We've only been open three days after five weeks, a little social media. And right now we're doing about 50% of the volume that we normally would have had for this time of year. So we've been very pleased. And then next week we can get back on May 11th. We'll put our outdoor dining chairs six feet apart and can get back into the catering with private events at the capacity level that's required by our um, state. So we've been very impressed and glad to be back in business again. And all of our staff feel safe. They all wanted to come back off unemployment. So we, we have a good, great team and um, we just work as a family. Well, that's a good testimony to using social media and getting your social distancing in place. Uh, there are a lot of questions on the chat. If you can't see the chat, I'll tell you this. We'll, we'll make all these slides and all this content available to you, but there's some good information about where you can get tools. So a few things that are there. We will have, on our, in our media kit, we'll have signs about using masks, about the importance of safe social distancing. If you need examples of how that works, on our website, we've got 
uh, several big businesses um, operating plans. And I encourage you to look at Toyota's because in there they show you how to mark off six feet and some, some actual graphics you can use. So a lot of that is done with literally duct tape. Uh, so um, getting the social distancing marked in a visual way, I think is gonna be very helpful to your customers. Um, so a lot of that content is available uh, on our website. If you, have, if you can't find it or you're wondering where to, where to go directly, um, just ask us and we'll direct you to it. Uh, but here's my sales pitch. If you're on this call by Zoom, down at the bottom, you'll see a little chart that says polls. In that poll is just a quick question. If you find this useful and would like to be part of a group that doesn't even need to involve me, it could be just you all being connected so you can share content, um, let us know that. We wouldn't share your emails or other things without your blessing, but uh, some of the town halls I've hosted have turned into kind of peer groups that are meeting to make sure they're just sharing how the opening goes, what the hitches are, and that sort of thing. And if that's useful to you, we are happy to hear that from you and to set it up. And if you're not on Zoom, you just have to email us or put it in the chat and let us know because we are perfectly happy to connect you all and let you um, keep in touch on, on nuts and bolts like where to get signs. We've put quite a few of those uh, locations on the chat, Signorama, Slade, Office Depot, Sign Crafters. It's amazing what you can do with um, some of that plastic foam core board and duct tape. <laughs> Who else has content? We're getting close to our hour. I know your time is valuable, so uh, my time is yours, but if, if, um, if we've hit most of the highlights and you think you've got most of the opening logistic questions handled, um, we'll, we'll call it a day, but I don't want to cut anyone off. So last call for those of you that are either about to open or, or sorting through the, the logistics you need to work out. Well, I'm gonna take a second then to thank you, um, encourage you to, to hit the poll or to just let us know. Um, but more important, let us know how it's going in a few weeks because um, every one of your businesses matters. We want 100% success. I know that success may look different. If you've got uh, practical issues, we wanna help solve those if we can. If we can't, we'll tell you. Uh, and we'll try to put you in touch with someone that can. If you need a place to store your tables and chairs, let us know that. We've got some sources for that. Um, and uh, beyond that, I'm gonna thank all of you that are on the call, including some of our partners. We've got representatives on here from our congressional offices and others, because I think you all should know that uh, it may seem like you're out there in the wilderness as a small restaurateur or food and beverage operator in this market, but there's, I've told you this before, there's no group this community cares more about. So we're wishing great success for next week. And we really thank you for taking time to participate in this call. Have a great evening and uh, we'll wish you well and hope to be in your place next week or soon in the case of Sauce and others. <laughs>